these long-standing fraternal connections between Jamaica and Kenya have undoubtedly helped to inspire and deepen the solidarity between our two countries today. As we move to capitalize on our historically positive relations, the President and I agreed that improving trade in goods and services, increasing investments, and facilitating the movement of people must be central to our strategy. Kenya is recognized among the top 10 fastest growing economies in Africa. The, that continent will remain in 2019 as the region with the world's fastest growing economies. Like us, Kenya is showing positive macroeconomic results. It is time, therefore, that we look beyond the customary fraternal bonds and seek ways to create real and measurable economic and commercial activity to secure greater prosperity for our countries and peoples. At the multilateral level, we have been collaborating actively within the context of the Commonwealth, the ACP Group of States, and at the United Nations. We are particularly appreciative of the strong support that Kenya provided during Jamaica's presidency of the ACP Council last year. And we wish Kenya every success as it now prepares to host the next ACP summit in Nairobi later this year. During our talks today, we emphasize the significance of international cooperation and partnership in the effective implementation of the 2030 uh, Agenda for Sustainable Development, and of course, critical issues to do with climate change and managing our oceans. Once again, we commend Kenya's leadership in championing these global issues. President Kenyatta, it is both a pleasure and a distinct honor to host you and to engage on these matters in the spirit of friendship and cooperation that has characterized Jamaica-Kenya relations over the last 43 years. I am hopeful that our renewed commitment showcased today will propel Jamaica-Kenya relations to unprecedented heights as we work towards achieving peace and prosperity for the benefit of both our peoples. I thank you. <laughs> Mr. President, your presence here today and uh, your recent appointment of the very first Kenyan High Commissioner to Jamaica reflects the growing relationship between Jamaica and Kenya. Indeed, this demonstrates to us your deep personal commitment to the Jamaica-Kenya partnership and to developing stronger ties with CARICOM as well. Today, Mr. President, we have engaged in critical discussions on issues of mutual interest to Jamaica and Kenya. The robust dialogue we have just had builds on our fruitful exchanges last year, including at the G7 in Canada, and takes forward our strong desire to increase trade and investment ties and to expand economic and technical cooperation. In so doing, we have agreed that we must now optimize the potential of our historical relations to yield concrete benefits in our cooperation efforts. Here, I emphasize that J the Jamaica-Kenya relations are deeply rooted in our historical connection with the African continent, mm -hmm. which predates the establishment of diplomatic relations in 1976. It is well documented that our first national hero, the right excellent Marcus Mosiah Garvey, had a significant influence on Jomo Kenyatta, the first Prime Minister of Kenya, 
and later its first president. He is, of course, President Kenyatta's late father. Joma Kenyatta was an ardent advocate for Kenya's independence and was a student of Garvey's teaching on unification and Pan-Africanism. That experience contributed to his efforts to create and lead a unified Kenya after the country gained independence, as well as his solidarity with other great African leaders pushing for Africa's liberation, unity, and development. In that context, we also recall the late Dudley Thompson as a Jamaican lawyer and Pan-Africanist in East Africa. He was resolute in his staunch defense of Joma Kenyatta when he was charged with treason by the British colonialist government of the day. 